All right, it is September 24th, 2012. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. Um, where you'll find uh, about 50 or so interviews um, of uh, independent third-party candidates that are running for uh, mainly Congress this year. Um, all, pretty much all of them are Congress. I do have one governor on there um, from Montana, but uh, what we're doing is um, letting people know that there is um, alternative choices. So some people say, you know, I, I don't want to vote for lesser two evils. You don't have to. Some people say, well, I'm just not going to vote if that's all that there is. But uh, uh, here's a new splash that you're not hearing out there that um, there are a lot of good candidates, um, ones that are going to uphold their oath, that are going to do a good job. They're going to do a much, much better job um, uh, than, than the people there that um, don't want to keep us informed. Um, you know, it's uh, Thomas Jefferson said that uh, democracy demands an educated and informed electorate. Um, and, 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 uh, and, and that's the ingredients that's... Um, uh, you know, being um, repressed um, by our, our media, um, and for, for one thing, and also the powers that be that have the uh, cartel, the Republicans and the Democrats, they don't want, they don't like competition, and um, and they, they have it just fine the way it is, they feel very comfortable. Today we have Danny Bedwell, um, he is um, running for district uh, number one in uh, Mississippi against uh, Alan Nunley, the Republican who voted for the National Defense Authorization Act. I mean, he might as well have just um, uh, voted against the Constitution right there. And um, and Brad Morris, the Democrats. Um, and um, uh, so, Danny, welcome, and uh, thank you for being part of our interviews here of showing um, the you know candidates all around the country uh, who's out there and uh, who's going to be in position to um, you know, be in Congress this year when there hopefully is a wave of uh, uh, people electing something new on the ballot uh, this year. And if you could tell us about uh, Mississippi's first district and about yourself and what got you motivated to be in the campaign this year, sir. Sure, first of all, thank you for what you do in educating uh, the electorate. Uh, as Thomas Jefferson said, as you rightly said, uh, the educated and informed electorate. And in this race that I'm in, in North Mississippi, I win amongst the educated and informed electorate. But it's the other 80% that I have struggle with, the people that just show up and vote, the people that don't even think about politics or issues. They go out, they go through their life, and they, uh, they're farmers, they're merchants, and they don't even give governance or the issues of the day any thought they wake up on november 6th they run out to the polls they vote for their republican candidate or democrat candidate or whichever club they happen to belong to without giving any thought to it so um the electorate in, in my section of mississippi which is the uh north part of the state it's largely conservative they just about always vote republican and uh Mitt Romney will carry it. Uh, what I tell the people there is, if you're truly concerned and you want to send Washington, D.C. a message, send them me. Um, Alan Nunley is the incumbent Republican, and he's been there. He voted for NDAA. He was co-sponsor of SOPA, but fortunately it was defeated. But then along comes CISPA, and he voted for it. He's voted to extend the debt ceiling. So my message to the voters of North Mississippi is this. If you want constitutional governance, you've got to try someone else. Um, if Obama is elected or if Romney is elected, we're going to need adults in Congress. We're going to need someone there who will refuse to extend the debt ceiling, that will not vote for NDAA, CISPA, the Patriot Act, or any of those other unconstitutional acts. So there it is in a nutshell. Yeah, if, 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 you have, if anyone out there has any respect for civil liberties or find that an important issue, um, it's, it's, it's a very important issue, and I, I, I just find it hard to believe that um, people on the left or the right wouldn't find it uh, very important to, 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 you know, because whenever people um, get in trouble, they always are the first to claim their constitutional rights. They, they want to know what they're being charged of. Um, and uh, who is um, accusing them? They w want to have a jury of their peers, due process, a speedy trial, um, you know, their property rights, um, you no know, illegal searches and seizures without a, 
you, you know, a rightful warrant um, from an independent um, judge uh, under oath. And so those are issues that we're facing right now. And if we can't defend ourselves against, you know, all these special interests that um, repress competition, that repress uh, competition to a point where they're willing to take away our civil liberties, then, um, you know, this could be a time of, uh, you know, a return to feudalism. And, um, and, and so if you don't think politics uh, matters, um, you, you know, it's, it's, you can run from politics, but uh, it's eventually going to find you. Or, or you can ignore politics, but it won't ignore you. And um, so uh, about, you, met, you quite clearly went over, um, uh, you know, some of the civil libertarian type laws. And then um, about the economy and the budgets, I mean, foreign policy, military spending, the budget itself, Social Security, Medicare, those are the three big um, tickets. Um, what, what do you think are some of the solutions? Because we're borrowing 40 cents out of every dollar where that's a national security threat right now um, to be burning on our future. And uh, it's just, you know, stifling us and, uh, and not letting us live our full um, potential right now. That's right. Uh, of those, uh, Medicare and, and Medicaid, Social Security, even defense, everything's got to be cut. Uh, I would propose a uh, a very radical budget, uh, one that would just basically give all the cabinet level positions half of what they got last year, and tell them to fire whoever they have to fire, sell whatever they got to sell. But this is the money you get. Now I know as one person, as a member of Congress, I don't have that authority. But what I have is the power of influence. I have the ability to make sound, well-reasoned arguments to other legislators and convince them that I'm right. Right now, the, the Republican and Democrat version is basically the same. It's, we can fix this through a centrally planned economy. And it's a lie. We yeah, cannot. 30 years from now, like, we might just balance our budget, and that's not even paying off any of the debt. That's just getting to a point where we're, you know, the budget's balanced. We'd still have all that debt, you know. That's, that's right. That's right. I mean, uh, and I hate to keep busting on Republicans and Democrats, but they're, they're, they're the same. I mean, I Paul don't. Ryan, who gets the uh, – <laughs> Paul Ryan, who gets the title as budget hawk, votes to extend the debt ceiling. You know, and he, he votes to, to balance the budget within 30 years. Well, I'm sorry, that's not a budget hawk. You know, that's an enabler. And, and what we have to do is just, when you're tired, when you're tired of, of trying to balance this thing on the head of a pen, it's time to take a big swing at it. And that's what I want to do. I want to take a big swing at government in general. I want to reduce the size, scope, and role of government. It's the only way that we can improve the economy that we can balance the budget, that we can reduce spending, we've got to cut the size of the federal government by half. Yeah, I mean, how about um, like the Homeland Security Department with all these fusion centers where the government has its eye, it's almost like the eye in the sky, like wherever you go, you're being tracked and traced, um, like a UPS package, and yet at the same time, when we want any information from our government, and this goes to that um, Jefferson quote again about an educated and informed electorate, we're not making choices based on knowing all the facts right now. We're, we're simply guessing, and that's why a lot of people don't vote, because they don't know what's going on. A lot of people um, don't like the republic. They, they have a record low approval rating. I mean, that's also uh, statistical. That's the Gallup poll. The, they, they've done it twice this year, 10% approval rating, uh, historical lows. And um, so a lot of people are refraining because that's what you do when you don't have all the facts. You wait till you have all the facts, and we need to send people in there who are going to give us those facts and who are going to hold these people accountable. And um, and right. the, the, I mean, how most of the spending, you, you know, it's 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 going to be a, a blessing because most of it, I mean, you know, maybe if they were forced to cut back, they would spend it on the things they need and not like all these special interests, these no bid contracts um, and uh, these things that we don't even need, like these X-ray body scanners and things like that. That was a total um, uh, inside, you know, bribe uh, with the Chertoff machines. Right. You know, um, I'm a small business owner. And I have to prioritize my efforts. I have to prioritize my spending. Every family out there does the same thing. They prioritize their spending. And our government has to do the same thing. 
on yeah. a team. So let's can. put us on the priority and, and and get all those special interests out, and we probably could save 50%. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's easy to cut 50% of the fat out of government. That's, you know, and not even touch a lot of the sacred cows. Right. But, um, you know, I... I tell people i jokingly i got this from mr lee writes i jokingly tell people my jobs program involves firing people every government regulator that is fired 11 jobs in the private sector open up so one of the things i would do is fire a bunch of people but we have to fire the right people we fire government regulators and the, it'll just create jobs right um, right the, the right ones like i mean they're like the people that were in the fbi trying to warn us that um you know there's these people taking off in planes not wanting to learn to land but their superiors were the people that you know pretty much you, you know uh, ignored it so it seems like a lot of times and that's just one example i mean i'm sure there's examples in totally different departments etc where it seems like we are higher you, you know um promoting the people that fail and uh and, and firing the or forcing out the people that uh, you know try to be honest and tell the truth right promoting the people that fail and that's where we are today if you look at if you think that the solution lies within the Democrat or Republican Party just look at today today just take a snapshot of today look at our budget look at our foreign conflicts look where we are we're we're often foreign countries killing people because they don't agree with us well if you think the solution to America's woes lie within the Democrat and Republican Party, you're sadly mistaken. And I don't care whether it's Democrat or Republican. It's well, they've be proven the themselves not to be. It's not like this is just a hypothesis. This has been scientifically proven with a, you know, triple blind study test. I mean, they've had the reins of power since like, you know, since World War II. <laughs> and before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The uh, it's it's going you're going to get end up with a centrally planned command and control authoritarian government if you vote for a democrat or a republican. Now they they both have different versions of that. And all I want to do is I want to uh, actually I want to reform government and reintroduce the notion of federalism because we don't have federalism anymore. You know, we used to have 50 individual Sovereign. Well, not with states. Obamacare, we don't. I mean, you know, and well, uh, we don't even have individualism with that. I mean, you were forced to buy something that you might not want from a private right. company. Right. And the perfect example, I use that a lot. Here in Mississippi, we had a, uh, a bill in the, at the state legislature to force uh, motorists to buy state ins uh, health, uh, I'm sorry, state car insurance. Well, the Republicans are the ones that put this bill forward, but yet they rail against Obamacare, which is, again, forcing someone to buy insurance. I simply ask, what's the difference? You cannot say, I want to force people to buy this product, not that product. It's unconstitutional to make somebody buy that product. Yeah, it's, it's okay to buy oranges. this product. Yeah, it could complete... Um missing the principle of it um that they are and uh and 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 look at romney i mean and, and his health care and in, in, in massachusetts um and, and then there's more i mean it, it, the, the government should help provide more free trade and and being able to you know get stuff cross borders instead of preventing it and um it should be it should help um uh, you know, induce it instead of hold it back. And um, and there are some states that want to, um, you know, legalize marijuana this year that's going to be on the ballots. And there's some states that want to put um, mandatory labeling of genetically modified foods on the ballots. I mean, shouldn't they have the right to do that? Of course. And you know what? All these stuff that's on the ballot, I love because it shows that we're winning. You know, I've been doing this a long time, uh, 20 years or better. And what I see is, uh, uh, thanks to Ron Paul, what I think, what I see are a bunch of uh, American youth getting together, understanding this notion of liberty, and then demanding it. Twenty years ago, you could stand on top of a table and scream Ron Paul's message out at the top of your lungs and it would fall on deaf ears. But now there's rooms full of people all across America meeting, discussing this thing called constitutional governance. And I like it. I like it. I like it. It shows that we are winning. People like to think that, oh, if Obama is elected, the, the, you know, the world's going to end tomorrow. Well, I don't buy into that. I say, yes, the tyranny will continue, but so will it under Romney. 
the good thing that we take away from this is that we are winning. The movement is winning. And I, you know what? I would be glad to vote for a Republican if they would just do right. If they would just stand up for constitutional government. Yeah, someone like Ron Paul, I mean, and, uh, you know, Walter Jones, or, you know, there's like two or three of them, you know, maybe Rand Paul, you know, even Dennis Kucinich, I think, is good. But, I, I mean, th there aren't many of them around, and, and we need more people. In fact, Ron Paul is retiring this year. He's not going to be in the Congress anymore. Dennis Kucinich, is, um, he, got, he, he lost his primary. He's not going to be in there anymore. Two people that uh, oppose the Patriot Act, that oppose the bailouts, um, and, uh, uh, it's, you know, it's two people that actually v voted ag against those types of things that, that, that were, you know, had the spine to be real, you know, patriots, uh, you, you know, however you want to describe that, and, uh, you know, constitutionalists, people that carry the Constitution in their pockets, um, and uh, before, you know, it's getting to be a fad, although that would be a good fad, I guess, but um, uh, so we need more people like that. I mean, you know, slowly, maybe we could get 10, maybe we could get 20 this year. I mean, this year, people do have the lowest congressional approval rating there is. This is an opportune year. I mean, there's um, lots of people in position. I mean, I've looked over a lot of the Department of Elections websites, and about 70% of all districts in this country have a libertarian or at least a Green Party or an independent, um, someone who is a lot more constitutional. If you look at their issues on their website, they're talking about issues like civil liberties. They're talking about issues like war and peace. They're talking about issues like freedom and um, free markets and, uh, and justice and uh, accountability and, and things like that. And not the kind of stuff you see on the Republicans and, and, and the Democrats' website. Website. I mean, Democrats, all they care about right now, it seems like, is Obamacare, and the Republicans, you, you know, um, just care about the, this Ryan budget and, and, and just these, uh, you know, problems to the problems. That's right. And, you know, that's what I tell the voters here in North Mississippi, is I tell them when you're tired of it, and I, and I mentioned this earlier, if, if you're going to vote for a Republican or Democrat, it's, you're voting for who gets to wear the ring of Sauron. You're not voting for constitutional governance. When I am criticized by my Republican brethren, by my Democrat brethren, when I am criticized, it's because I am for two constitutional governance. I'm for two limited government. They say, oh, no, we must have this organization or this organization or this entity. When they critique me, they normally say that I'm for two limited of government. Well, I wear it as a badge of honor. Well, actually, they're the anarchists um, because they're the ones who passed the NDAA, the Patriot Act. I mean, it, you're actually the, the rule of law person. You're actually the person for a fair government. I mean, if you want to be technical and, and you know, people can have this debate. But, um, I mean, t t to be quite honest, indefinite detention, uh, you, you know, troops. I think that's the extreme position. Yeah, that, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm that's a moderate. anarchism right there. That's, that's no law. I mean, that's lawlessness. Right. I mean, if you can just pluck someone up off the street, there is no more law. What you're saying is every man for himself. I mean, don't let anyone arrest you. You might as well, you know, defend yourself to the death because you're, you're not going to have any due process whatsoever. Right. You know, um, when I talk in front of the people, what I try to explain to them, what I try to make them understand is the notion of, you know, I'm a libertarian, so this is always in one of my speeches, the notion of libertar uh, liberty and freedom. Now, my opponents in this race, whether he's Democrat or the Republican, my, my, my opponents, what they want to do is they want to regulate the people or their industry in one form or another. They just want to regulate it differently. I, I, uh, I want to go to Washington to regulate Washington. The people, they've been regulated to death. The industry, they've been regulated to death. What the job of a congressman is, is not to regulate the people or their industries. The job of a congressman is to wa regulate government, and that's what I want to do. I want to go to Washington, and I want to regulate government. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and so, so well, let me ask you, is there, we talked a little bit about um, foreign policy. I, I, I believe you can expand on that. If Actually, yeah, if you, if you wouldn't mind doing that. But we did talk about civil liberties, um, talked about... Uh, uh, prohibition or touched into that, um, and, um, and and just accountability. Is there any issues that uh, you would like to uh, bring to you know this interview here, sir? Uh, well, I think you've nailed them. Uh, foreign policy. Um, they, you know, we've got to butt out. We're at war in several nations, whether they're open warfare with tanks and troops, 
or whether it's war from the CIA trying to subvert uh, some so- sovereign country's type of government. We're over there meddling in their affairs. We're trying to either overthrow their government, we're arming insurgents, or we're propping up dictators. That's not the job of our military. We need to bring them home. That's not the, that's not the, the role of our government, of our federal government. So we need to stop all of this meddling. Now, if people want to, you know, fight other wars, they can. They can be, you know, uh, mercenaries. Just they, 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 and they, if they want to fight for other countries, they're they're more than welcome to on, on their own, you know. And uh, right. Uh, and and I, I mean, honestly, I mean, that's you know, to put someone in that kind of position, uh, you know, it should be used um, as you know, kind of the just war theory. If we only if we really need to do that, and um, and uh, so. Um, yeah, in fact, in Afghanistan, I mean, it seems like we won that in the first couple of months, basically, and then it just seemed too quick that we just stayed too long, and uh, and, and and there's a lot of people making a lot of money off that, the same kind of people that President Dwight D. Eisenhower, a Republican general who won World War II, warned us against, um, if he has any clouts on, on you, you know, uh, policies regarding the military and the industrial complex, um, uh, so, uh, th- as far as, um, well, let me think, oh yeah, there's an issue that's kind of... Um, I would like, let me, let me yeah. expand on that for just one second. Um, I am retired military. I'm a retired Navy diver. Great. And I spent 20 years doing what I thought was defending the United States of America. Th- those that might think that I'm a pacifist, I am not. Those that think I'm a peacenik, well, perhaps... You know, I've I've grown philosophically, uh, but one thing I am not is a coward. And I, if if those that want to go to foreign countries and kill people, if they will talk with me, I can convince them otherwise. But as long as they sit there and watch the news and say that our troops are over there fighting for America and defending freedom and liberty and truth, justice, the American way, and all that stuff, that stupid stuff. Uh, they're, they're being fooled. Uh, I want these people to talk to me and find out why we're actually over there. Well, I believe you would, and I believe you would do a great job in Congress doing that to the nation. And um, uh, so, yeah, per- perfect. Um, that's, uh, that's that's great. And, um, well, what about um, there's – and I, I guess I could just add a little to that is that there – you know, if we can't defend ourselves against, um, you know, the vicious cycle of Republicans and Democrats or this um, debt that we're in or the special interests um, that are, you know, trying to be monopolies or governments, then, you know, um, it's going to be hard to defend ourselves against anybody. And, uh, and uh, but there, there's a, w- one issue. I don't know how it goes in Mississippi um, right now, but uh, what what is your stance on... Um, pro-life and uh, pro-choice, and, and how do you look at it um, and uh, view that and think is the government's role as far as that goes? Well, I would probably, as the step one, repeal Roe v. Wade. I have no power to do that. But personally, I am pro-life. Um, at, at minimal, it is a state's issue. This goes back to federalism, as I said. It goes back to federalism. So, uh Step one would be to repeal Roe v. Wade and put it back to the states. Second, as a pro-life individual, I would use my power of influence to uh, try to convince people not to kill their offspring. Or, I'm sorry, I, I read something that I kind of agree with, and it said, um, unless, basically, unless you're a woman, keep your mouth shut. And that's probably what I should do. Well, that 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 makes sense. I mean, would do you think there's any exceptions on like you know? Oh sure. Rape, life of the mother, and um, okay, and, and and basically a state's issue, and uh, it is a tough one. I mean, um, and uh, because um, it really goes to determining what people think the beginning of life starts at. Um, I think that's the debate. That's right. Yeah, and uh, that's right. And then we might not even know that issue yet. So some people feel like you know, well, if you don't know, then you definitely should. Um, uh, you know, but hopefully in the future there's like you know technologies where it won't even be needed. Um, you, you sure. Know, and uh, things like that. But um, I would also say this. You know, I've been married for 28 years to the same woman. 
we don't agree on everything. You know, we, <laughs> we we disagree on everything. It's okay to disagree with me on whether whether it's that issue or any issue. Yeah. But you have to look at the big picture. So so that's what I that's the message I would like to get across. Well, that's really cool because um, I mean we do need honest conversation in this country also and, and that kind of um, attitude uh, you, you know that would be representative of you know people that are like you said an adult um, in, in there and uh, so is there any um, people that have been on your mind lately that you've been thinking about um, or that you have thought about uh, whether they're historical or just people nowadays um, and uh, and why have they been on your mind recently and um, yeah so I would I would say the people that have been on my mind a lot over the past couple of years have been a the founders and also the philosophers during the Scottish Enlightenment period. I like John Locke. I could I could talk about uh, Thomas Jefferson. I like Thomas Jefferson. Uh, oh my goodness, uh, Lysander Spooner. Uh, of course, on the economic side, Hayek, Murray Rothbard. I I just uh, uh, these people. The deep thinkers is what I call them. They don't, they're not the one that's going to show up at the poll and say, you know, I'm going to vote for this guy because he promised to give me something. You know, these are the guys that thought about human nature and also about what is evil, what is good, what is moral and immoral. So these people have really guided me. And the reason, I guess I'm going to sound corny here for a second, but the reason I decided to throw my hat in the ring and run for Congress is because I care about this nation. I care about humanity. I don't want to see people subjugated. I don't want to see them placed into involuntary servitude, even if it's the involuntary servitude of majority vote. I want to see freedom and liberty for all. And, and you know, we don't have these discussions anymore. There were the old guys, the Murray Rothbards, Lysander Spooners, John Locke. They talked about that. And those people have been on my mind. And I think, I really think that is what's absent in today's political discussions. You know, are people born into the servitude of majority vote? I like to think that I was not. You know, that I'm a free man and can, through mutually agreed upon contracts, can decide what things are best for me and what things are not. And uh, so in answer to your question, those, the uh, old guys, we'll call them that. Well, that sounds great. Well, they they uh, they live on with their words, and uh, and and we can still read those. And um, and Teddy Roosevelt said, "My hat's in the ring. The fight is on, and I'm stripped to the buff." And um, but that was one of his quotes. You mentioned uh, yeah. being in the ring, and uh, so uh, well, Danny Bedwell um, dot com, D A N N Y B E D W E L L dot com is where you'll find more information. Where you can find information how to support this candidate, and um, even if you're not in this specific district, um, remember his choices will affect uh, your life and um, and, and, and the world. Um, so, uh, so that's something to think about, um, you, you know, while you're out doing whatever you're doing, and uh, uh, you can it affect your own life here and, and support him and people like him, and, and uh, we can get as many as we can get this November 6, 2012. Um, it can happen, and, 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 you know, don't vote on the polls. Just vote your heart because you never know. No one knows how everyone's voting, so the only poll that matters is a poll that's after um, all the votes have been counted. And um, So, Danny, it's been great talking with you. Um, I'll say goodbye to you real quick after this interview, and, uh, and thanks a lot for your time, sir. Thank you. And just I, I want yeah. the voters of North Mississippi to know that the ones that are concerned about voting for the lesser of two evils, as a libertarian, I say I am the lesser of 435 evils. So vote Danny Bedwell for Congress. Yeah, there, there you go. And uh, d definitely, you know, maybe even um, a little bit of good <laughs> there as well. So great.